A lot of changes need to be made here in New Orleans, but we are going to be doing a full offseason breakdown, free agency roster breakdown, and a mock draft for this New Orleans Saints team. So let's go ahead and march in because I this is going to be my most dramatic mock draft. At least that's what I'm projecting at the moment. I'll just say that. When we get into free agency, it's going to be wild. So I'm going to kind of buzz through the roster here because like there's a lot of good players. But there's also some things we're going to have to do, unfortunately. So, let's start off with the offensive line. And this offensive line, especially at the beginning of the season, was bad. It really was. They were not protecting Derek Carr at all. And that's one of the reasons why he was struggling, too. And they had to check down Charlie to Alvin Kamara a whole time throughout the season. It starts with Andres Pete, who, when he came in at the end of the season, he actually did stabilize. He had his best year, I would actually say, that I have seen from Andres Pete. Uh, Trevor Penning, look. I'm not ready to give up on him. It took three years for his teammate Spencer Brown to kind of develop. I mean, we saw very similar things. There's a lot of talent with Trevor Penning. And for this team, you got to believe in him. Bring in a, a vet or bring in somebody to compete here with Trevor Penning. But I'm not really looking to maybe spend a, a first-round pick on, tr on replacing him at the moment. We're going to be looking at somewhere. I'll tell you that right now. So foreshadowing on the offensive line. We need to re overhaul this offensive line. James Hurst is a free agent. Eric McCoy is really good. He, you know, well, but there might be some things we might have to do here. Cesar Ruiz is a solid player. He got an extension. He's also a leader on their offensive line. Nick Salaverity, though, I, I think he's got some potential to be able to play. Fourth round pick last year from Old Dominion. I liked him a lot. I think he's a lateral movement skills. And as a pass protector, I think he can be a good one. Ryan Ramchek, the knee, the lingering knee issues. That's a big situation we need to talk about, too. It's like, will he retire? So we need to start thinking about that right tackle position. Plus, his cap situation is kind of tricky, too. He's expensive. On to the wide receiving core. This is an area where I think they should be Okay, Chris Olave is this team's number one, and he's a star player. Rashid Shahid showed big time in his deep threat ability this season. A.T. Perry showed enough, too, at the end of the season when Michael Thomas was injured that he can be a playmaker for them. Michael Thomas, I think he's gone after this season. Besides that, though, maybe finding some youth, more depth behind those guys. Tight end, Jawan Johnson. Didn't show as much as I thought he was going to be kind of like a breakout candidate this year. But at the end of the day, I think that, you know, you keep him. He's under contract. You can't really get out of that. So Taysom Hill, I would go ahead and save that money as much. I love Taysom Hill. He's a great football player to watch, and you just root for him. At the same time, you can save $10 million post-June 1st in him. Foster Morrow getting fully healthy after leukemia. You know, that's tough. So, uh, you know, coming back from cancer is not an easy thing. And he did it at a high level, man. And uh, he's a good number two tight end to have. Jimmy Graham, I think, ends up moving on after the season probably a free uh, uh, retire again. On to the running back room, I would also recommend probably moving on from Alvin Kamara. Not to say that Alvin Kamara is a bad back or anything. I don't know if he's, he's not peak Alvin Kamara anymore, but with Kendra Miller, I view him as a guy who can step in and be the starter for this team. I like him a lot, and I think Jamal Williams got to play better next season. Hopefully he can be, you know, stay healthy and whatnot. He's still under contract. You really can't move him. So Kendra Miller, Jamal Williams, maybe bring somebody into the late portion of the draft. And then on to the quarterback position, this is a tough one because I know Derek Carr, it's frustrating, okay? I, and I get the frustration because Derek Carr is kind of like, he, he puts you in quarterback purgatory. He's just good enough where he doesn't lose his job, but is he going to get you to over, you know, over the hump? Is he going to elevate your roster? No, probably not. And I, I like Derek Carr on and off the field. The dude is just, he, you know, seems like a cool dude. I, it just, it is a challenge. And with this cap situation, I don't know if they're going to be able to do anything. And plus with where I'm going to be leading into it, I'm not going to be doing anything right now. On to the defense. Defensive line, ideally you could use another edge rusher, but Cameron Jordan is going to be back with his cap hit. And you really can't move on until next year. Carl Grenison's a high-end number two pass rusher. Good player. He's got an extension. Isaiah Foskey, we need to see more out of him next year he gives you a more of that speed which is something that this team needs so I'm, I'm i'm hoping that he gets more of a chance next year and we can see him develop patrick turner i heard had a good camp unfortunately he got injured at the beginning of the season and was out for the year with that uh, lingering foot and then tona uh, tona cabasagone is also under contract he gives you some good versatility you can go on the inside too on, on rushdowns interior this is where i'd look to find maybe another draft pick as well maybe a mid-round pick and or bringing in a free agent uh, to go along with this, the youth and what they have. Nathan Shepard's a good situational pass rusher. Not the, you know, like this lockout, run defending type of guy. 
per se, but he can definitely make an impact as a pass rusher. Keelan Sanders, he's okay, but you could probably move on from him. Malcolm Roach, he's super strong. I like him. Before he got injured, man, he is, he's really strong. Again, he's not the biggest guy or anything like that, but he's super strong, and I think he could be a nice little run defender on early downs, so keep him around. I'd really like to re-sign him. Brian Brzee showed to me plenty enough where he is a 100% a starter next year. As a pass rusher, he's got a great first step and quickness with his hands. Yeah, he wasn't great in run defense per se because I think he did, you know, at times, you know, especially as a rookie, a defense tackle is a tough position to learn, but also the lack of length. Overall, I'm not concerned. Brian Brzee should be a locked in stud for this team. On to the linebacking core. Demario Davis, while he's a beast, he's still one of the best linebackers in the NFL. I think he may have to move on with that cap hit. Pete Warner had a bit of a down year, but I expect him to bounce back next season. And then we go on. Zach Bond's also a free agent, so I do need to mention that. He was a good situational pass rusher for them and somebody I would like to bring back if possible. On to the cornerback room. You're good to go with your starters. Alante Taylor, Paul Sanadibo, Marshawn Lattimore, really good. I would recommend keeping this group together. Paul Sanadibo had a monster year, was excellent, man, was maybe a top 10 corner this year. Marshawn Lattimore was dealing with some injuries, ended the season on IR. He's still a elite corner in my eyes, too. He's still one of those lockdown guys. Isaac Yadam did a great job stepping up for him, so he's somebody I'd look to prioritize bringing him back. You just think about the future because Adebo is a free agent next year. I would I'd try to bring him back, though, give him an extension with the way, especially if he plays like he did this year. He's going to be setting himself up for a monster extension. So just kind of a future potential option slash depth. On to the safety room to finish this up. This is an area where I'm going to go ahead and look to cut loose. Even though Matthew's still a great safety, I think you go ahead and cut loose, save the money there. Same thing with Marcus May, post-June 1st. It, and uh, Jordan Howden showed enough for me where he's a starter next year. So bringing in another safety, though, we need to help improve this back end, and that's going to be what I'm looking to do. Get ready, because we are on to free agency, and I'm summoning all the powers of Dark Magician, because <laughs> we need it, man. We need some sort of Dark Magic attack, and we need to clear up this. Uh... Oh, man, I love Yu-Gi-Oh, but... Good old uh, the anime was awesome. Let's get back to this though. And what we have to do here is I'm going to post June 1st a lot of these guys. And it starts with Alvin Kamara, Taysom Hill, Demario Davis, Ryan Ramchek, Tyron Matthew, Marcus May. Okay, that gets us into negative 22.34 million after post June 1st. I know that's a lot of money that we're going to be moving into 2025 as well. But at the same time, I have a two year outline approach that I think that you can get this. Uh, cap space under control in a two-year period. It's going to take two years. I'm just going to be straight with you. But that, to me, aligns this team really well that maybe you draft a quarterback in 2025 and, and then 2026, you're going to have so much money to be able to build this football team back from its grassroots and start to be able to put talent around your young quarterback. That's kind of my approach and my philosophy for this. And I do want to say this real quick. This I don't take any pride in cutting players. Like, these are good football players. And this affects livelihoods and stuff like that. I mean, I'd be serious. Like, this is tough. I mean, it really is. It's not easy to cut these guys. It means they could have to move their families, schools, all that stuff. It's not an easy discussion, but I'll be real. It's really tough. But it's one of those things that I think you have to do if you're of New Orleans Saints and Mickey Loomis. I respect the fact that he went for it. He took the window, but now it's time to reset this cap and, and work towards the future. Uh, Michael Thomas, he's a free agent, but we're going to post June 1st that to also spread some of that money. Kalen Sanders will post June 1st to save a little bit more money. That gets us to negative 17.43. You're going to have to restructure a little bit as I talk about. Let's go into a trade, which we're going to be making a trade because to me, Eric McCoy is the one dude that I feel like we can get a trade and get good value. It's possible you could get a second round pick back in exchange for Eric McCoy. I try to be conservative with this. A third round pick, I think, is very much in the cards very easily. Still a young player. He's a, you know, a pro bowler. He's a very good center, man, and somebody that for the Chicago Bears would make a ton of sense because, you know, they might get Caleb Williams or, you know, if they keep Justin Fields, you want to make sure you're protecting your young quarterback. And why not bring in a guy like Eric McCoy on a th for a third round pick? Absolutely, man. I would do that. So I think it makes sense and it allows them to save $9.6 million more. You still have some of the restructure stuff that you have to eat. But overall, that gets us to negative $7.83 million, which a lot better, right? And then we go on to the re-sign period. I'm just going to re-sign Rashid Shahid on a, uh, you know, again, a once uh 
exclusive restricted free agent deal, which should be around a $1 million deal. Isaac Yadam, Zach Bond, Malcolm Roach. Those are the only guys I'm really bringing back here. I'm going to let go of everyone else that I've got listed in every other free agent. Now, there's a couple of restricteds we can bring back. I just include that as a $2 million depth slash restricted spend. And that gets us into a negative $15.83 million uh, in terms of cap right now at this moment. So we don't have a ton of money, obviously. And we're just going to bring in some, some guys that I think can at least compete for roster spots and give us some much needed depth like Josh Jones at that left tackle position, maybe trying to fight for a chance for him to be a starter or to get a big deal, right? He's been looking for that big deal. So you come in here, he competes with Trevor Penning, and, and hopefully you find one of those guys to be the starter for the left tackle. Sua Peta coming over from Philadelphia, maybe also looking for his big break as a starter. He competes with Nick Salaverity at that right guard position. Cedric Wilson, just depth there on the defense side of the ball. Derek Nottie, good run defender, can be an early down specialist for this team. And as I talked about, maybe bringing an early uh, down run defender would be helpful. Zach Cunningham, he's also a good run defender. He's a, you know, somebody that can not going to be, he's not going to be Demario Davis, but he can be nice tackler for this team. We're going to have to invest in the draft in this too, but I had to go as cheaply as I possibly could at finding somebody that I think could be a good impact playmaker and start for us right away. Terrell Edmonds also bringing him in here as nothing else, a, uh, a high end, you know, number three safety, number two type safety, and uh, can go along there with uh, Jordan Howden and be, you know, some, but we're still going to be looking in the draft there too. But you also include the draft spend of $7 million. So overall, with all of that, our our cap is now negative $33.08 million. On to the roster before the draft, and this is outlining some of the areas that I still think we're going to have to address going into the draft. Offensive line is the number one need on this team, especially with what we've done. I'm going to go ahead and predict Cesar Ruiz could play inside at center. Maybe we move him outside of guard. It just depends on what the draft lies and who, where, if we're able to get, you know, uh, one of those centers or if we ever get a top guard. It's going to just kind of kind of depend on that. But Ruiz gives you that versatility, so I feel comfortable he can either play center or play guard. Finding some youth in the receiving room, maybe finding another, you know, scat back to go along for that Alvin Kamara type replacement in this running back room. Clint Kubiak coming in here too, getting another another guy with some speed. And then on the defense side of the ball, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the safety room. I think we got to improve there. Linebacker, we have to improve. Defensive tackle, maybe finding another pick in the mid rounds. And then a cornerback as some depth, maybe future need. All right, it's draft time. And here we go. I'm going to Marius Mims with my first pick at number 14 overall. Huge Amarius Mims fan. I think this guy is super underrated right now. I'm seeing him go like past the 20s in mock drafts. I believe he's a top 10 type of talent, top five even type talent. It's just the limited sample size, but I've, I've watched every single snap this season from Amarius Mims, and I am just so impressed. The dude has great movement skills for a guy, six foot seven, 330 pounds, and he has immense power. Great length. Oh, he che checks off every box, in my opinion. Yeah, he can open up his hips at times for some of the more, you know, speedy rushers. But it's like when he gets hands on you, it's over. I saw big improvements to its hand technique this year. Really like Amarius Mims. Right tackle of the future here for this team. And in and, and this case scenario, I let go Ryan Ramchek. He is a day one starter for them. I'm not worried about it. Really not. I think he's going to come in here right away and be a big presence. On to our second round pick. And this is a draft where I'm just saying you go BPA no matter what. For the Saints, you just need good, talented football players. Cam Kitchens is going to be my pick in the second round. He can be that deep safety to go along with Jordan Howden. Going to be that playmaking specialist, too, for this team. Get you some interceptions. Get you some turnovers. Another player that is going to be a foundational piece for you. Be your long-term kind of like Marcus Williams replacement if you think about it. But with those ball skills, the physicality, he comes downhill. He's not afraid of that. Uh, the big thing with him is just kind of working on those coverage busts that he struggled with this season. But I do like Cameron Kitchens quite a bit. And then we go on to Cedric Van Pran. Felt like he was the best available interior offense alignment at this point at pick 75, the trade pick that we got from the Bears. And he comes in at the center position. He moves Cesar Ruiz over to left guard spot. Or Nick Salaverity, you can kind of compete it out. Slash uh, Sue Apata. You kind of just work it. Get your best three offense alignment in that interior. And you go from there. But Cedric Van Pran comes in and ends up being a starter for you in either the guard or the center position. Next up, Jalen Ford, Texas linebacker, Hook'em Horns, really nice linebacker. Doesn't have elite sideline to sideline speed, but he's just one of those guys where he, he's going to be a solid football player. You know, he's, he's a ferocious tackler. He triggers quick. He's got good instincts around the football. 
solid in zone. I didn't see, you know, anything where I was worried. I'm like, yeah, he can make some plays in zone coverage. He's not going to be a super sticky man coverage guy or anything like that. He just doesn't have that quite level of athleticism and fluidity, but he, he can definitely change direction and do what you need to do. I think he can be a leader for this team and somebody behind Zach Cunningham who can learn for, you know, a little bit and then be the starter. Next up, Joshua Cephas. Developmental throw. Kind of gives me some LaVisca Chenault. Maybe a better receiver version of LaVisca Chenault. Maybe, who knows, something like that. But an outside developmental receiver. Then on to our next pick, Quantez Stiggers from Toronto, the Argonauts. And he was over in the Canadian Football League. Big time story, man. Wow, this dude has got one heck of a story. And somebody that uh, definitely drafting, taking a chance on and seeing if he can develop. And it's, you know, he's going to be a fifth corner early on, but you let him develop for a season, see what you got. Which is really impressive at the Shrine Bowl. Next fifth round pick, we're going with Keith Randolph Jr. from Illinois. He's a really nice run defender. He's got that, he's, you know, Illinois, they teach block destruction really well. And he's good at getting off that blocker quick. He's got quick hands to kind of defeat uh, offense alignment. So somebody that comes in here, rotational player early on, maybe gives you 100, 20, 200 snaps somewhere in that ballpark and can help them out on their defensive rotation. Next up, six round picks. Rasheen Ali's our first one. Gives you that explosiveness, right? He can be a nice, uh, you know, explosive runner for this team. Be a good complimentary piece with Kendra Miller for the future. Six round pick, we're going with Taji Washington, USC receiver. And he he looked great at the Shrine Bowl. And he's obviously one of those guys where you kind of expect it because of his size. But he was really looking good. You know, it's like he checked the boxes for sure as a route runner and just making people look silly. And he was phenomenal too for USC this season. Season was their top playmaker, I would say. So you get another player that gives you a little bit upside there, and we'll see what we, what he can do. Be another playmaker for this team. And then final pick of this draft in the seventh round, we're going with Willis Patrick. Brandon Coleman was on my radar this season, a bit of a down year. Willis Patrick was, I think, their best offensive lineman for the TCU Horn Frogs. And this guy, man, is he's got he's got some power, man, some pop on contact. He's got good arm length. Really impressed with his tape. I only watched the Baylor footage, but man, I was impressed. So I need to take a look at some other tape from Willis Patrick, but I thought he did a great job, man. He had some, like I said, some stagger power. So he can be a developmental piece on this offensive line. Let's go on to the roster after the draft, after free agency, everything that we've done. I have to say this right now. We have to prioritize patience here with this team because it is a two-year project type of rebuild with this cap situation. I'm not looking to tank, okay? That's not what I'm in here for. I'm looking to continue you to build talent absolutely and win football games but at the same time i do think you need to take a step back reset that cap get this thing under control while trying to you know build talent acquire draft picks do what you can rebuild your offensive line amarius mim cedric van pran are going to be pieces for that hopefully nick salaverity can come along and also be a developmental piece and a starter for them uh, you got Cesar Ruiz, Trevor Penning. You need to show for sure this next season, but we do bring in Josh Jones to at least compete. Suapata also on the interior. So the offensive line's going to have some growing pains. I'll be real. It's going to be tough early in the season, but let's hope by midseason they can start getting some continuity together and long-term this offensive line can be elite because they're very young. <laughs> this, is a, this group can have a lot of upside to grow together. At the receiver position, adding some late round picks with Joshua Cephas and Tajay Hall. Developmental guys, but some upside there. But you got your starters with, with A.T. Perry, Raj, uh, with Chris Olave, and Rashid Shahid. Quarterback, yes, you keep Derek Carr in the mole, but that's just what it is right now. Next season, that's kind of when you look to move on and you can get that cap uh, very much movable there. Rashid Ali, just a kind of a scat back, rotational player to go along with Kendra Miller and Jamal Williams in this running back room. Gives you some more dynamo in there. On to the defense side of the ball on the defensive line we don't add in any edge rushers my hope is Peyton Turner can stay healthy I know that's tough to say but Isaiah Foskey a second round pick last year Cam Jordan you can't move on from his cap this year so between him Grenderson Foskey uh, Kim Pasagone and Turner like those are your five rotational guys that's the way I'm viewing it so that's why I didn't add there interior we did add with Keith Randolph we bring in Derek Naughty isn't enough we'll see but I think between Brian Brzee stepping up in year number two I feel confident Malcolm Roach coming back he's a nice early down player Nathan Shepard's a good situational pass rusher so you got something there I'm not saying it's going to be a strength of this football team but it should be okay linebacker we bring in Zach Cunningham he can be a starter early on and then hopefully future wise Jalen Ford and ends up being that leader, uh, you know, to go along with Pete Warner at that linebacker position. Uh, Safety-wise, we added Cam Kitchens to be an immediate impact player. I think he could win that job day one over Terrell Edmonds. I mean, look, maybe Edmonds starts the season, Kitchens works in as a rotational player, 
But uh, between him, Howden, and, and, and um, you know Edmonds, I think that's a good group of, of three safeties. And, and JT Gray is a fourth guy there, as special teams. Cornerback to finish this off, we had in Quantez Stiggers there. You know, again, I think he's just a developmental guy. If you can't bring back Paulson and Debo next year, which it should be able to, especially with some of the things we've been able to do. And uh, you know, Isaac Yottam, too, we brought back on a one-year extension as some depth here purposes. So that is it here for the New Orleans Saints. Roster breakdown, free agency strategy, and a mock draft. <laughs> you know what you think? I know. This was a really crazy one, and it's it's tough. So I fully I fully get this is going to be a very, very difficult one, Saints fans. But I feel like this this is what I would do personally. I don't know if it's what, how, what um, Mickey Loomis is going to do, but I think it's time. I really do. Uh, a lot of good football players we had to let go in this one. So hope you guys have a really good day, though. My name is G-Sling. I'm doing my thing, and I hope you do, too.